Hey everyone, how are you guys doing today? Welcome back to Off the Wall. Today we're going to be reviewing the latest and newest Star Trek series, which is Picard. This is season three, episode one, and it's called The Next Generation. First of all, so I'll just throw that up just to make sure, but it's sick. Okay, I'm going to tell you now it's sick. What a pleasure it is to be back with the Next Generation team and the Next Generation guys. It's so much fun. Uh, particularly, you know, Picard and Riker's relationship, which I'll get into in a second. And full disclaimer as well, I haven't seen all of Picard, meaning uh, the series up until this point. I've watched, I think, the first three episodes of the first season. Uh, I have not seen season two at all. So if I do miss anything, uh, you know, in this review, please put me straight in the comments. Let me know if I've uh, got anything wrong at all. But uh, yeah, I'm just reviewing this specific episode. Um, because from a lot of early reviews I've seen or I've been notified of that it is like a sequel or it is like a continuation of The Next Generation, in effect, like a season eight to The Next Generation, which I've seen multiple times and I love dearly. So, um, yeah, let's get straight to it. Really quickly, I'll give my overall thoughts. Particularly, I was impressed with the CG in this. Very cinematic um, from the shots in space, the ships, kind of action that happens, really impressive and cinematic. But the best thing about this episode is the music. I believe his name is Stephen Barton. What a fantastic job he has done, uh, in particular, the musical score of the USS Titan. I think that's, I presume that's a new theme, but that's brilliant work, quite frankly. You know, tying in music from the original series, um, you know, the movies. Star Trek, obviously, Generation, of course. Um, but what a fantastic job this guy has done. Uh, because as the Star Trek theme should do, it invokes thought, feelings, the sense of wonder, uh, the sense of what you can achieve, you know, the sense of friendship, you know, doing the right thing and reflecting, our, you know, the modern time that you're in within this sci-fi realm and uh, amongst these characters. So, uh, this the themes absolutely do that and it's the best part of the episode what a wonderful job he's done from the opening scene you'll be able to tell that these scenes or these um, what is unfolding will be will tie into a bigger narrative of the overall part of this season um, we do see there is a shot of a federation ship being chased by an alien vessel or, or aircraft and we see beverly crusher fighting off intruders uh, she leaves a distress call for picard to and then kind of goes into warp we then cut to picard with his girlfriend i'm not sure her name is laris or loris um discussing the pronunciation of it uh discussing uh, this obviously famous painting of the uh uss enterprise d and they reveal that laforge jolly laforge um is kind of running the fleet museum which will obviously come into effect later on down the line in different episodes and in the series um he then hears later on in the day he hears a communicator sending him some kind of alert or notification and when he does find it it's it's a message obviously from beverly crusher sent to that specific communicator which he hasn't used in 20 years in the message it contains the phrase hellbird and also to not bring starfleet do not trust starfleet do not trust anyone Picard then goes to meet Riker in Guinan's bar I'm in San Francisco. I'm not sure if Guinan is in this series. I did believe I saw some kind of interview that said she's not in it or some kind of confirmation. So I could be, I could be misremembering the season that they're referring to, but I'm pretty sure a few months ago I did see confirmation that she wasn't in the series. Riker is awesome. Uh, you know, his humor, his, uh, you know, his personality. And the best thing in, you know, this episode, along with the music, is Riker and Picard's relationship. And I know Riker is in season two, you know, from the trailers and stuff, but um, obviously we've got new writers and new showrunners, etc. So the the dialogue and, and back and forth is, is wonderful. And it's everything that we fell in love with, you know, with these characters all them years ago. And it's um, they're doing it again, and it's absolutely fantastic. You know, showing respect to the characters that we know and love. They also mentioned Frontier Day, which uh, I'm not aware of what it is, but I'm sure it will. That specific event will have, you know, future bigger things to 
to unfold throughout the show. And also he mentioned his family. Obviously, we know his family. Uh, we know that they're in it from the trailers, but uh, I presume they're still together. Uh, I can't wait to see them. You know, uh, what, um, you know, integral parts are of the whole Next Generation story. So, yes, definitely can't wait to see his family again. Uh, Riker then explains uh, what Hellbird is to Picard or they establish of how to decode the message. Um, and then that it was something it was a, a virus a computer virus that affected the uss enterprise d when picard was being assimilated by the ball so from decoding the message they established they need to go to the right on the system except at this point obviously they have to avoid starfleet they also do not have a ship so and they also established that they've not spoken to beverly crusher in 20 years and she's cut everyone off from the crew of the next generation so um we might see the reason why in a few minutes. So we then cut to a character called Rafi. She is undercover as a Starfleet officer, but undercover in a seedy underworld where she's picking up drugs in effect. And she meets unsavory characters in dark alleyways, in a bar. Um, you know, she's trying to get secrets, that kind of thing. So these scenes, or my least favorite parts of the episode in general, that they were a little slow and uh, they were quite hard to see as well. You know, the interior shots of the bar and and her later on in the episode, uh, I, they 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 distracted from the main story, from the characters, the legacy characters that we know and love. So, I didn't uh, love these scenes or this character, to be honest. So Riker and Picard then head to the Starfleet Earth orbiting base and come up with a ruse to board the USS Titan. This Earth orbiting base is so beautiful, and it's something that I believe that they've taken from the Bad Robot movies. And that is my favorite, one of my uh, things that I do like about the Bad Robot movies is the CG of the um, kind of Starfleet and uh, the Enterprise and, you know, going into warp space and things like that. So these are very cinematic things that I'm glad they've taken from the movies and the uss titan looks absolutely fantastic the scene of when it's first unveiled and you know with the theme the cg brings the sense of wonder and exploration and science and things that we all that were all connected to um you know an integral part of star trek Riker also explains that he has to try and convince uh, an unfriendly face in captain shaw once they board the uss titan they then come across Seven of Nine, who is the first officer who greets them, is the first officer to greet them. And then they're in, they are then taken to the bridge who, and they meet uh, LaForge's daughter, which I found really hilarious. The, um, you know, the whole crash LaForge. I genuinely laughed out loud. That was really uh, surprising and obviously very reminiscent of Star Trek Generations where they meet Sulu's daughter on the bridge of the USS Enterprise B. They then sit down to have this dinner with Captain Shaw who is a very arrogant and has no love for Riker or Picard. And uh, it says this inspection will, <laughs> will not be to their liking because uh, it doesn't, they won't be involved in a battle or crash landing, something that is very usual for Riker and Picard, which uh, was, you know, very cheeky uh, and funny of him to do so. Shaw refuses to change uh, their direction and, and where they're heading, uh, their course, sorry. And Picard pulls rank, you know, explains that I'm an admiral, you know, Shaw then explains that you're a retired admiral and you are a captain without a chair. You have no jurisdiction here. So uh, he's having none of it. And I quite like this Shaw character, very abrupt and, and arrogant towards these legacy characters. And he's clearly going to be a foil for these characters moving forward. We then cut to Rafi again, who is in communication with an unknown Starfleet contact. She then finds out about this unknown weapon that has been stolen and she has to figure out how and why. We then cut to a hilarious scene with Riker and Picard as they're sharing a cadet quarters, I think it is, where they're, you know, they're top and tail bunk bed, um, which was uh, really funny. Seven and nine then calls them to the observation lounge where she wants to know what is going on. Riker and Picard explain to her they don't want to get her involved to jeopardize her career potentially she then explains that she this is not what she envisioned for her career she doesn't want to work under someone like Shaw, and she agrees to take them to the rhino system um and she explains that she, they have to board a, a shuttle immediately 
uh, before he finds out. And of course, Seven will be in serious trouble with Shaw once he finds out. We then cut to Rafi for the last time in this episode as she, con she attempts to contact Starfleet and warns him of an imminent terrorist attack. And uh, she's too late. And what happens next is a wonderful CG, quite frankly, where the Starfleet Academy is destroyed. The destruction is weaponized and dropped on top of the city. And we hear the screams and uh, absolutely fantastic CG. Uh, really impressive and very, very cinematic. We see Picard and Riker again. Great banter as they uh, pull up on Raiden and they establish, you know, Picard has bad hands. Riker's got bad knees. But as long as they don't have to move or shoot, we'll be fine. Very typical of, of them too, uh, from what we've seen from, from over the years, particularly in the series, um, hilarious. They then find Beverly Crusher aboard her craft. Uh, she's in some kind of suspended uh, med pod or suspended sleep or something. And a young guy takes Riker hostage. Um, they quickly learn that he is Beverly Crusher's son. And he looks about 20. No one's seen him for 20 years. Obviously, we know Picard and her had a thing, so it looks like it's Picard's son, you know, another potential son for, for Picard I've seen a few times in the past, so that should be interesting. And the episode ends where uh, an alien spacecraft pulls up. Overall, yes, definitely a good teaser involving Beverly Crusher, her son, and obviously this missing weapon that caused huge amounts of destruction, which these guys and, you know, the Riker and Picard are not aware of yet, seemingly so. I really, really like the dialogue this episode, in particular between Picard and Riker. Um, you know, this season, I didn't see season two, obviously, I knew that Riker was in it, but obviously with these writers, they've got a really good take, and you feel, you really feel like these guys are hardcore fans of Star Trek and Next Generation and the original series and the movies, so I appreciate what these guys are trying to do they feel like they really know it loads of callbacks as well and uh, like i said the best thing was definitely the music this episode some negatives particularly the lighting um of this this series and modern star trek in general whether it's star trek discovery or star trek a new world any interior shots are really dark whether it's on a bridge whether it's in a room um you know whether it's on a planet any interior shots the the way they're choosing to film it is really hard to see whether it's Rafi's stuff on the street when she was trying to get her drugs i couldn't hardly see inside the bar where it's Guinan's bar whether it's on the bridge whether it's in their shuttle Riker and Picard i couldn't hardly see and it's obviously a purposeful thing i've noticed in the trailer as well as a few more shots like this so i don't know why they've chosen this way but you know next generation was never like that or shot it was shot wonderfully quite frankly where for example then it in engineering, you would always see what's going on with that kind of big blue thing behind them and all the railings, etc. There was never an issue of you couldn't see what's going on. So I don't know why this modern version of Star Trek, um, they can't do that. And I'm not talking about the cinematography, you know, the the space shots, the, the shots of the ships, the planets, that is all beautiful. I'm talking specifically about the interior lighting and color palette and the other negative you know i just wish there was two episodes i feel like it would have played stronger obviously this must be part of an arc which they don't wish to do so potentially but um i just really wanted more you know it was a long episode 50 minutes uh, you know longer including post credits uh, sorry long inc including the credits which i really liked as well the credits were fantastic you know with the original theme as well towards the end of it and uh, i stayed for the full you know 52 and something minutes i really enjoyed it uh, overall, I am definitely, definitely looking forward to the next episode. A much better direction for Star Trek. Um, so, yeah, a really good episode. Not great. You know, some outstanding things. You know, I could have seen more action. I, I want to see the rest of the gang as well, the rest of the uh, you know, Next Generation crew, where they're at, what's going on. Don't know the full story yet, but so far, I'm definitely in. Much better for modern Star Trek fans. and something to look forward to. Uh, if you're new to the channel, please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think of this episode. Any predictions? in this series so far and we'll catch you guys on the next review.